Hello friends, by this time we have seen the normal anatomy of chest in a radiograph. So now is the time to look at various pathologies. So we shall begin with collapse or atelectasis first. I have divided collapse in various modules and in each of the modules we shall discuss about what do you mean by the term collapse, what are the subtypes of collapse, what is the science by which you can identify collapse on a chest radiograph. We shall also discuss about specific named signs in collapse and finally we shall see the patterns of collapse affecting each of the lobes by means of various cases. And in today's lecture, we shall cover what is collapse, what are the types of collapse, and what are the signs in the collapse. First and foremost, what is collapse? So in the given image, you can see this is the right lung parenchyma and this one is the left lung parenchyma. What is striking? The left lung parenchyma appears reduced in volume. So this is basically the definition of collapse. So let's see what basically happens in collapse. So you have the cross section or a diagrammatic representation of alveoli. What do you note here? Specifically the alveoli are air filled and they appear distended. Now this is the image of a collapsed alveoli. What is striking? You can see that there is decrease in the volume. So basically collapse is nothing but there is loss of lung volume indirectly referring to loss of aeration. We shall discuss about the various types of collapse. So, there, so basically there are four types of collapse. We shall see them one by one. What do you have here? You have the trachea here and it's going to the right main bronchi and the left main bronchus. So in the left lung you can see the normally aerated lung but what has happened to the right bronchus? There is something occluding the lumen and as a result of which the right lung has collapsed. There is loss in the volume. So this is the type known as the resorptive type of collapse. So in resorptive type of collapse, you have something obstructing the bronchus and as a result of which there is loss in the lung volume. So to be specific, it is obstructive type of resorptive collapse. Yet another, there is another cause for this resorptive collapse. What is it? In the second type of resorptive collapse, it is due to hypoventilation. That is, we have the trachea and the bronchi and you have got the diaphragm here. So normally the diaphragm moves up and down during inspiration and expiration and uh, the diaphragmatic muscles help in aeration or ventilation of the lung. So in case where the diaphragm functions less, can you think of any situation? Well, definitely in post-operative patients, the diaphragmatic movement or diaphragmatic excursion will be diminished as a result of which there would be hypoventilation and this results in resorptive collapse. So basically you have resorptive collapse which is one of the subtypes of collapse and it can be due to obstructive cause or it can be due to hypoventilation. Now coming to the second type of collapse which is known as passive or relaxation collapse. So what do you, what happens here? Let's see in this diagram. You have the trachea, you have the right and the left bronchi. You can see the left lung is pretty much okay and marking out the right lung I can definitely appreciate that there is decrease in the volume. So the next question is why there is decrease in volume? So if you observe carefully, this is a pleural lining covering the right lung. There is something occupying the pleural space. What can be? It can be air, it can be fluid, it can be blood, it can be pus or 
anything. Something is occupying the white pleural cavity and is exerting pressure on the lung and is forcing it to collapse. So this type of collapse is known as passive or relaxation collapse. Now coming to the third type of collapse which is also known as cicatrization, cicatrization collapse. As the name suggests, it has got something to do with fibrosis. So the pathophysiology behind it is that there is something in the lung that prevents its expansion. So this expansion action of the lung is prevented. What can be the cause? It can be due to anything in the lung. For example, pulmonary fibrosis that limits its proper expansion or something in the pleura. For example, pleural fibrosis or pleural contraction that prevents the expansion. So anything that affects the expansion of the lung causes this entity known as cicatrization collapse. Now coming to the fourth variety which is known as adhesion collapse. So what is shown here? So this is a diagrammatic illustration of an alveoli and as we all know this blue thing coating the inside of the alveoli is the surfactant. This type of collapse is due to decrease in the surfactant. Does that ring a bell? Well, we are familiar with this entity in the pediatric population and it is known as the respiratory distress syndrome of the newborn which is basically due to decrease in the surfactant. The surfactant is needed for proper expansion of the alveoli. The surfactant prevents the alveoli from collapsing. So if there is deficiency in the surfactant, the alveoli will collapse. Now let's go to the next topic, which are the signs of collapse. So basically a question arises, why do you need to know these signs? These are used to recognize collapse on a chest radiograph. These are divided into the direct and the indirect signs. Before going to signs proper, we should have a thorough understanding about the fissures. The major way by which we can identify collapse is by looking at the fissural displacement. So as we've discussed in the previous lectures, usually the fissure that is evident in the frontal chest radiograph is the minor fissure. But remember, you can also see the minor fissure in the lateral chest radiograph. Whereas to see the major fissure, you have to definitely go for a lateral chest radiograph. But there are exceptions in which rarely a part of the major fissure may be visible in the frontal chest radiograph. So always keep in mind the position of these fissures on the frontal as well as the lateral radiograph. We shall see why. Now going to the direct signs of collapse. So there are major three signs, direct signs in collapse. These are the loss of aeration, fissural displacement and crowding of bronchovascular markings. Let's see them one by one. So given before you is a figure on the left hand side, what can you see? Pretty much the lung feels abnormal, yes. So basically this is a normal chest radiograph. Now compare it with the figure given to your right side. What is striking? There is a huge radio opacity in the right hemithorax. So this is one of the signs of collapse which is known as loss of aeration. So remember the well aerated lung fields appears black. That's what you're actually looking in chest radiograph. So here you can see there is no pretty much no black areas except for few outlined here. Rest is occupied by white areas. So, so there is something occupying it. So this is a sign of loss of aeration. This is one of the direct signs of collapse. Now let's see this figure. What is striking? Look carefully. Okay, scanning through this field, it's okay. Now scanning through this field, there is something here. What is it? There is an opacity. So as described previously, what is evident here? There is loss of aeration is evident here. How do you confirm that it's a collapse? 
For this, if you look carefully, you can make out this opacity has got a sharp border. This is nothing but the displaced minor fissure. So, friends, this is the importance of knowing fissures in the radiograph. I have already described the minor fissure is expectant in the horizontal position in and around or other level of the fourth brick. So here what has happened is this fissure has moved up, moved up to this position and it has bordered the collapsed lung. So this is the second direct sign of collapse. So we have seen loss of aeration, fissure displacement. Now coming to the third figure. What is evident? Can you make out an abnormality? You're scanning through here, you're scanning through here. Yes, you have encountered a pathology here. What is it? It is an opacity. What else can you make out? Zoom in, zoom in and you will see it clearly. Now, I'm marking in a, out in green linear white structures. What are these? These are vascular markings. Now, I'm going to mark out these black areas through it. What are these? These are the lung parenchyma or you can say that accompanying the vessels, the, these can be representative of the bronchi. So, you have got what here? In one word, you have got crowding of the bronchovascular structures. So, revising our previous lecture, what else is evident here? The right heart border you cannot make out. So, this is a classical example of loss of silhouette. We have seen the third direct sign of collapse. So three direct signs of collapse are loss of aeration, visual displacement and crowding of bronchovascular markings. Now we are going to see the indirect signs of collapse. So given before you is a figure. What is striking in this figure? Can you spot an abnormality? Definitely, you have got an opacity here. What is it? For this, we shall look at all other structures. Remember our A, B, C, D, E mnemonic? If you were to look carefully, you can see the right hilum is appearing dense as compared to the left. What else is striking? Draw a line. Both are at the same level. Is this the normal? Definitely not. You expect, you expect a pattern like this. That is, the left hilum is expected to be higher than the right. So go back to our previous lecture where I've described or discussed about the reason for the same. So this is one of the indirect signs of collapse where you have got displacement of the hilum. So the hilum can move up or move down. We shall see them in detail when we deal with individual cases. Now let's see this figure. What is abnormality that you can make up? Definitely there is an opacity here. What else? Look carefully, you can make out that the left hemidiaphragm is at a higher level. Is this the normal? Definitely not. We know that the heart will push the diaphragm down and you expect the left hemidiaphragm at a lower position than the right. This is definitely pathological. So, so displacement of the diaphragm is another indirect sign of collapse. Now, let's see this radiograph. This we've already seen. What is abnormality? There is a opacity in the right hemithorax. It can be due to various causes. So is there anything that helps you in saying that this is a collapse? Look carefully. Remember again our A, B, C, D, E mnemonic. What do you see? You have A, which stands for airway. Would you see that? The trachea and the right bronchus has shifted or deviated to right side. So this is an important sign. It's one of the indirect signs saying that the opacity in the right hemithorax is a collapse. So remember, 
the in three indirect signs that we've discussed so far are the displacement of the hilum which can be up or down elevation of the diaphragm and now we have seen the third important indirect sign which is mediastinal displacement so by mediastinum you first we have marked out the trachea again there is another sign can you see the left heart border no where is the left heart border it has displaced right side so there is mediastinal shift so friends by end of this lecture i hope it's clear to you what do you mean by collapse of lung we have also discussed about the subtypes of collapse we have also seen the various signs of collapse by which you can identify collapse on a chest radiograph they can be broadly divided into direct and indirect signs so in the upcoming lecture we shall see about the patterns of collapse by means of various cases thank you